I want to show you how to make your Kubernetes files more reusable. By the end of this video, you're going to have all the basics you need to start using Helm for Kubernetes. Ahoy there! Another day on the high seas of orchestration. My name's Jim and I'm going to be your captain today. Go ahead and grab the helm and I'll show you how to navigate the rough waters of Kubernetes. Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes designed to simplify the deployment and management of applications and services within a Kubernetes cluster. It provides a convenient way to define, install, and upgrade complex Kubernetes applications by packaging them into reusable and version components called charts. Charts are the packaging format used by Helm. They contain all of the necessary Kubernetes manifest files, along with optional configuration files, templates, and metadata. Charts allow users to define and manage the entire application stack, including services, deployments, config maps, and more, in just a single package. Some of the advantages you'll get by implementing Helm are a more simplified deployment, more reusability of your code, the ability to version and rollback, as well as templating. Okay, now let me ask you guys a question just to make sure you've been following along so far. Where does Helm store all of its Kubernetes information? If you said inside charts, you are correct. Okay guys, let's go ahead and jump into it today. So I'm gonna be showing you how to deploy an application using Helm. And we're going to be using a very uh, simple application. Actually, if you've been following this video series, it's gonna be an application you've seen uh, before, last week in fact. It's going to be the same um, Python Flask application. So. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend going uh, going to that link um, and seeing it if you're interested. Otherwise, please just try to follow along as best as you can. Um, the steps should be very simple enough and repeatable. This is just going to be uh, hosting a very simple um, Flask web page for us. But yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it and I, uh, we'll probably get into it a little bit further. So the first step uh for this process is going to be to build a docker image we're going to want to have a uh, stable image of whatever we're using once we confirm that image is actually working on um docker so last week we confirmed that uh our simple flask uh application was able to um be deployed using docker and hosted on port uh, 8000 locally. So what I wanna go ahead and do is expand this over, uh, well, expand this, so go over from pet to cattle or you know, just sort of increase the uh, amount of workload that I can work with. So in Docker, I'm only kind of playing with one container, uh, whereas I wanna use Kubernetes and have um, a whole bunch of pods to work with and be able to scale up and down as um, needed. So to do that, uh, first thing I'm going to need to do, as I mentioned earlier, is build a Docker image um, just to prove, just to have a stable base. Uh, so let me go ahead and do that. And you'll see here, I already have a tag for this. It's going to be JPL Flask app latest. And just explaining this, this is my um, Docker Hub uh, user, uh, followed by slash... This is going to be the actual um, name I want to give the um, image that I'm working with. And this is going to be the tag that I'm working with, uh, or the tag that I want to give it, which is going to be the latest tag, since this is going to be the latest version of the image that I'm building. Um, and this is how you would kind of uh, build a Docker image for... Um, so it would be able to be pushed to Docker Hub. So once you have this tagged in this notation, um, Docker Hub username slash, uh, sorry, uh, uh, image name tag. You would just go ahead and build it. Great. Now that that's done, that's actually not on Docker Hub yet. That uh, just ensures that it was built locally. So to do that, I can go ahead and just open up the integrated terminal. 
Uh, and there are a couple different ways you can do this. You can do this through um, the IDE. I'm pretty sure you could also do this through uh, the um, Docker extension on Virtual Studio. But I'm just going to go ahead and do it through the terminal just because of how easy it is. So uh, very simply, I would just need to do a Docker. Like, hold on, images first. Docker images. I'm looking for this JPL Flask app image. That page. And it's going to be a Docker. Push. Push it over to GitHub. Image name. Give that a minute to work its magic. Okay. Looks like my image has been pushed. So if I actually go ahead and open up a link to Docker Hub. You'll see here this uh, if you actually go over to Docker Hub, sign in and go over to your repositories. You should see that a uh, new image has been pushed over to your user. So now it's available for public use. And um, now anyone who has uh, access to Docker will be able to pull it, which is um, very good and very bad. So if you're working with a private project, make sure that you make your repository private. Uh, but if you're working with a public project like this, it's okay to leave it as a uh, public Docker repository. Okay, so now that we have our image all set up, the next step is going to be to, let's go ahead and go over here. Uh, next step is going to be to build a YAML file or a Kubernetes YAML file. Um, instead of having to go through all of that, I actually already have one pre-built. Uh, and actually, if you're using Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio Code uh, gives you something really nice to work with. Uh, you can very, you could actually get all of this done um, very simply by just typing out what you want to, what kind of resource you want to deploy. So here you'll see that I have a deployment and a service. So if I wanted to, you know, add another deployment or you know, add another service, all I would actually have to do is just type in deployment or service. And if you have the Kubernetes extension installed um it'll actually bring up this for you and if you click on it it'll bring up a template for a deployment so you can uh very easily just replace a lot of the um text strings in here making it uh pretty easy for coding for those who are not as familiar with kubernetes or the syntax and it's the same thing for any uh kubernetes resource not just the deployment so if i wanted to do a service it's the same thing And all of that is available if you have the um, Kubernetes extension on VS Code. But yeah, uh, going over this webapp.yaml file very, uh, very quickly, I am just going to deploy a deployment called Flask App. It's going to consist of three replicas. It's going to be using that um, JPRL Flask App, um, Flask App latest image that I declared earlier. These are some uh, very simple resource limits that. Uh, the Kubernetes uh, template gives you uh, right off the bat. I'm just going to go ahead and leave them in here just for, um, you know, just for safety constraints. And then uh, you'll see here, I have port 5000 declared on my pod. That's just so I'll be able to forward it over to my service. And my service over here is declared as a load balancer. And that's just going to um, kind of load balance the traffic between all of the three pods. And if you're confused by some of the terminology here, that's fine. Um, a lot of this is really nitty gritty DevOps terminology that you may need to brush up on. But yeah, once we have all of this um, set up, uh, next step is going to be make sure, uh, making sure you have Helm installed. Uh, if you already have it installed, awesome. Uh, otherwise, you're going to need to go through the install directions. And a quick and easy way to make sure that you have everything installed is just typing in Helm. Uh, like most CLI commands, it'll bring up the uh, possible command actions for you. And let me go ahead and close this and open this terminal just to make sure we're working in the right folder. 
Okay, great. So I made sure that I have Helm installed. I have my YAML file all set up. I have my image all um, pushed to Docker Hub. Great. So what's next? So the first thing you're going to want to do here is do a uh, Helm create. So it's going to be a Helm create and then give it the name of whatever you want to call your project. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and call it Flask app. So now you'll see here I have a Flask app repository uh, or directory initialized. And this is going to be every, all the um, Helm files that I need. You'll see here there are lots of different things here. I have different values that are going to be imported by Helm if I want to. This is going to be my um, chart template. And over here, you'll see here I have a uh, template directory which contains a bunch of different templates for me. So these are all example templates of things. If I wanted to deploy, let's say, a deployment, this is going to be an example template for that, a service, an ingress, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do here is actually delete everything in this folder because I actually don't need anything, um, anything here. These are all just templates to work with. If you wanted to, you can probably edit them and mess around with them. But since I already have my um, webapp.yml.yaml file um, declared, I can move those to the recycling bin and actually just copy this over to my templates directory. And another thing I'd like to note here, uh, so typically you would want to split these two up into different templates, and I will actually just go ahead and do that now. So I will make a service.yaml file, and that's going to go ahead and contain my service, and I'll split them, split them up now, sorry. With that, save my app file. Save that. And I will rename this deployment.yaml just to make things a little bit more clear. Okay, great. So now I have my deployment and I have my service and my templates folder. Now, what, what do I do with any of this stuff? So the next thing I'm gonna, you're going to want to do is actually install your templates. And you would do that by doing the helm install and you're going to be giving it the app name, Flask app, and the application directory, which is going to be this Flask app directory. So dot slash Flask app. And once it's successfully deployed, you'll see something like this outputted. And now if I uh, check Kubernetes. I can either do this through the CLI or through my uh, Kubernetes extension. I'll go ahead and just do it through the extension to be a little quick. Fresh. And if I were to check my services, I will now see a Flask app service. If I go over to my deployments, I will now see a Flask app deployment consisting of all three of these pods. And I didn't have to really worry about any of the overhead or worry about uh, a lot of the uh, deployments required for this uh, because Helm just sort of took care of it for me. So now you see the usefulness of Helm. And if I wanted to make sure that uh, everything is actually working correctly, what I could do is go over here to my service and port forward. And if I I believe that service is using port 8000 and I don't I shouldn't have anything uh locally on my port 8000 so I can just forward like that. So if I do that and let's go ahead and open up that local host page again. And you'll see uh, here is already starting to handle the connection. If I go to how are you again? Fresh we can tell that this is working properly. And that's basically how you would deploy using Helm. And so now that I have my resources deployed, uh, let's say I wanna like tear tear this down. Very, it's pretty easy, same thing. Uh, you would just need to do a Helm uninstall and throw it the name of your project. So Flask app. And now it just, um, uninstalled everything for Flask apps. So if I give this a refresh, you'll see all my pods are now in a 
destroying state. I no longer have my service. I no longer have my deployments. I no longer have my resources declared within my templates. Helm took care of all that overhead for me and quite a flash. Okay. Yeah. Looks like that's it. Um, and that's how you would basically deploy with Helm. You're at the Helm. Uh, you're at the Helm now, Captain. Okay, I think you guys should have everything you need to get started with Helm. And, as always, please like and comment down below, and if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and share it with your friends. It's much appreciated. Until next time.